Hey, what is going on? My name is Rubidium. Uh, I've been making a couple of these videos about this camera right here, the C200. I've had a lot of great comments, a lot of great feedback. A lot of people that kind of aren't necessarily film industry professionals and want to know why you would spend this much money on a camera, what it does, and kind of wanted to look at how we got to the, um, the digital cinema revolution. Ten years ago, when I was directing TV commercials in Australia, there was one game in town, and that was film. Physical celluloid. You had to buy either 35mm or 16mm undeveloped stock by the foot. You had to rent a film camera because no one owned them. And then you had to um, make a lot of educated guesses on set on how to expose it. Then you had to have the film processed. Then you had to have the film telecined, meaning transferred from film to video. And that was your initial color grade. So all of those steps were really expensive. All those steps were really time consuming. And, but that was it. The, there was no real way to get a nice image. The only alternative to all that expense and time of film was a video camera. Now these were big bulky things. Um, they were usually a uh, Sony Betacam. They had fixed lenses, meaning they had a zoom lens that went from maybe five, six downwards um, that was attached to the camera. They were very contrasty. Uh, they didn't have much dynamic range and they looked, they looked like television, but they were getting better and better. And some manufacturers wanted to develop a more filmic image. And the terms filmic and cinematic and you know these sort of frames get thrown around a lot, but uh, if you go back 10 years and you look at the difference between a television still and a film still, it's huge. It's so clear uh, why people wanted this more filmic, the image that looks like it was shot on film because film was expensive. It was in the cinema. It was, it was a prestige and that's what video cameras didn't have. So the first couple of video cameras that shot a filmic image were expensive and hard to use. Probably the Thompson Viper was the one that um, first was used on feature films, uh, on Collateral and on Zodiac. It was more than $100,000, it was pretty large. The reason that, um, the two reasons that those directors used, like Michael Mann and David Fincher that used that camera, used it, was one, being able to do longer takes than the eight or the 12 minute um, take that a film camera could do because it would physically run out of film. So David Fincher could do his end like 400 takes without cutting um, to get the performance he wanted. But also because they were able to shoot much more low light. 2007, 2008, you could shoot on video, but it wasn't any cheaper than film. Then the guy that founded the Oakley Sunglass Company that bros worldwide really love, uh, decided he wanted to be in the film business and developed the RED camera. Um, the RED one came out, it was $20,000. I think you had to spend around $40,000 um, in mags and all the things you need to use it, but it had interchangeable lenses. So you could go and rent a very high-end PL lens kit that you would on a film camera, put it on the RED one, get an image that was really versatile, that was easy to grade. It was a pain to use when it came out. I think it took like three minutes to start up. It would overheat, it would shut down. It had a lot of kinks. Plus the image that it produced, and some would argue that the RED cameras still produce, is a more computer image than a film image. It isn't immediately obvious how to make it look like film. So a company called Ari, which made most of the film cameras, um, the physical film cameras that were on the market, decided that they would develop a sensor and start a, um, a digital film camera. And they came up with the Ari Alexa. Now this, this fulfilled all the promises that the RED camera had made. It was um, efficient to shoot with, it worked really well, it, the image was beautiful. Um, and very gradable and very filmic straight out of the camera. Um, it wasn't as versatile maybe as the RED, it wasn't as reconfigurable for all these different aspects, but it, it really worked and it worked well. The Alexa and the RED started creeping into the shoots that people still had 40 and 50 and $60,000 to play with. But then Canon, uh, which made Stills cameras, Stills digital um, SLR cameras, somehow decided they would enable video mode on their 5D Mark II. Now, this was a not just a full frame, not just a 35mm camera, but a full frame camera. 
um, and it had interchangeable lenses like every DSLR. And people worked out how to get an amazing image um, out of this camera. The industry was really transformed. Everyone wanted to shoot on this camera. Everyone was able to get um, use incredibly fast uh, stills glass, uh, you know, 1.8 and 1.4 and 1.2 lenses to get incredibly shallow depth of field and make an image that was still kind of video-y look much more filmic. So in the wake of uh, that camera being released in, I think, 2009 or 2010, um, a lot of people rushed into the market uh, and tried to produce digital cinema cameras. Um, a couple of years later, video camera that had interchangeable lenses, that had um, sophisticated audio inputs, and that shot an image that was not made to come straight out of the camera necessarily, but made to go to a colorist so that the colorist had all this, these options and control in post-production. They also added all kinds of tools that, um, that uh, filmmakers wanted and allowed them to rig the cameras to different things. So probably the last, um, the last big thing to come to digital cinema cameras was a raw workflow. And still photographers, still photographers had been using RAW for years. It's essentially capturing an image separately in red, green, and blue um, so that you can mix it in post and have a lot more flexibility, a lot more power, and no compression. You know, so these cameras, when they first came out, were in the um, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, the second generation um, was around $10,000. And now Canon came out with this camera, the C200, uh, which retails between six and seven and a half thousand, depending on what version you get, and shoots raw in 4K and has a whole bunch of other tools that let you um, create a cinematic image and make it really easy to um, work with. I'd say my favorite one of these is dual pixel autofocus, meaning that um, the camera is able to pick an object like a person's face, like mine here, and then track with it without me having to uh, manually adjust the focus like you would have previously. This just frees up so much time. Um, lots of people have tried to do this uh, and Canon probably has the best system right now. The really great thing that digital cinema does that film never could is incredibly high ISOs. So shooting at night with practical lights, shooting cities and city lights, um, shooting in the dark. Uh, these are things that just weren't possible on film. Professional film sets and filmmakers still do spend tens of thousands of dollars replacing every single bulb in uh, street lamps when they want to shoot uh, a scene outside at night. Um, digital video cameras like this are able to crank really high on the ISO, clean up the graininess in post with different algorithms and get a nice clean image that uh, looks amazing with very low light. So it's not all... Uh, Sundays and lollipops, this camera does have, and all digital cameras have some downsides. Um, the more flexibility you want in post, the more you have to pay for that in file sizes and processing times. This camera produces huge, huge files um, that uh, you then have to deal with uh, on your computer and save on your hard drives if you wanna have that flexibility. In addition to that, to get a filmic image, um, to get a cinematic image, it will always, you will always need preparation. You'll always need um, a bunch of gear, a bunch of equipment, a bunch of time to go through and make that image look different than real life does because the cinema look isn't a realistic look. It's a heightened look. Um, it's a heightened reality that lets people know that they're um, being told a story. And, you know, there is no shortcut to... Um, getting the lights right, getting the audio right, um, having a team around you that can create an image. So that's a very basic breakdown of what digital cinema is, where, how we got to where we are, and why it's so important that we now have cameras like this that shoot a 4K uh, raw image for under $10,000. Thank you very much for watching. I'm glad people are getting something out of these. Uh, I will see you next time.